All right, so today we're going to talk about uh, factoring a little bit more. Um, we've done some factoring already, um, went through that review. These are what we call harder ones, and all that means is um, your first round of factoring may not be where you can stop. You may be able to continue to factor even after that first round, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, again, the objective here is to make sure that you can factor trinomials. Um, which, again, it's what we've been doing. So uh, this is one of the types of problems that we, were, uh, we did in the last homework. Um, not anything too different here. Uh, just a quick review, and you've got a couple of problems to review here. Um, you know that you're always looking for a GCF first to factor out a greatest common factor before you factor the trinomial down. And in this one, your greatest common factor is just a negative one. Since that lead coefficient is negative, we do want to go ahead and factor out a negative 1. And when we do that, we're going to divide all these guys by negative 1 and get x squared minus 2x minus 15. And then we're ready to try to factor down this trinomial into two binomials. And so we factor x squared into x and x. And because this lead coefficient is just a 1, we're really looking for factors of negative 15, which are negative 15, 1, negative 5, 3, uh, 15 and negative 1, and 5 and negative 3. We're looking for those uh, factor pairs that add to negative 2, right? We're supposed to be looking for um, the factor combinations that multiply together and then add to negative 2 uh, when you're looking at these sets of factors here. But again, since the lead coefficient is 1, the factor, you factor 1 down into 1 and 1. So we don't really need to consider that. We're just looking for the factor pairs of negative 15 that add to negative 2. And we can see right away that's these two guys right here. So we can go minus 5 plus 3, and then we're done. Right? Next one. Uh, again, we're looking for a greatest common factor. And that greatest common factor is a negative 1. And so we're going to divide all these guys by negative 1, which basically just means change the sign on everybody. And then we're ready to factor down into two binomials. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different than the first one because 6, that lead coefficient, uh, factors more, is not just, the factors are not just 1 and 1. So we are going to play our game a little bit more here. So your factors of 6 are 6 and 1, 3 and 2. And your factors of 10 are 10 and 1, 5 and 2. You could also go negative 10, negative 1, negative 5, and negative 2. And to try to, to narrow down your options a little bit, when that happens, when all of your factor pairs are the same sign, either both negatives, both positive, um, then what you can do is you can look to this middle term, this 19, which is negative, and know that you're not going to use the two positive factors because two positive numbers cannot add to a negative number. So I'm not going to even think about 10 and 1, 5 and 2. I need the two negative factors. So we play our game. Try to come up with factor pairs that multiply together and then add to negative 19. And so, uh, we look and we try. Uh, we can try 6 times um, negative 10 is negative 60, and that's just way too big for 6 and 1, negative 10, and negative 1. Now, flip them around. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10, and one time, negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. So, negative 10 plus negative 6 is negative 16. It's close, but not quite there. Uh, we can try 3 and 2, 3 times negative 10 and 2 times negative 1 and add those together, and that's not going to be it either. Switch it around, 2 and 3, and it's not going to get it done either. You just want to go through and try, right? Now, I'm going to um, shorten this a little bit and tell you that 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4, and negative 15 plus negative 4 is negative 19. So those are the factor combinations that we need. So we're going to use 3 and 2 for your factors of 6. And we need to link the 3 
to the negative 5 and the 2 to the negative 2 as factors of 10. And now we factor down. Okay? And again, I know this is a lot of what we're doing in the last homework, so we should be okay with this. Uh, the third one before we get into our new stuff. Same thing. We need a GCF. And with this guy, uh, the greatest common factor is going to be a negative 3. So if we divide everything by negative 3, we're going to go 5x squared minus x minus 6. Okay? All right, let's factor down this guy. 5 will only factor one way, 5 and 1. So over here, I need factors of 5 and negative 6. So i got 5 and 1 here. And for negative 6, we've got negative 6 and 1, 6 and negative 1, negative 3 and 2, and 3 and negative 2. And so we need combinations, multiplying combinations that will add to negative 1. And again, you just go through and check, right? You just go through and, and check and see which ones are going to end up working. Now, it, you would turn out, you would find that if you take 1 times 5, you get positive 5. And then 1 times negative 6, you get negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. So that's the combination that we need. That means I have to link the 5x from the 5 to the 1 in the factors of negative 6. And that means minus 6 has to go here. And we're done. All right? So quick review. And again, if you're not understanding this, you've got to get in and get some help. Okay. Next, we're going to factor down again. Okay? Here's the difference between what you just saw, what we went through as review in your last homework, and, and um, this problem here. And that is this lead term is a degree 4, right? It's x to the 4th. And there is no GCF that we can factor out here. So we're not going to be able to reduce the degree of that first term. It's the first time that we've tried to factor something that we couldn't get a GCF out and turning in, turn it into a quadratic trinomial where the degree was 2. But that's okay. We're going to still factor down the same way. This is still a trinomial, and we're going to factor down into two binomials. So you still have to factor the first term. Obviously, the coefficient of 1 factors into 1 and 1. The x to the fourth could factor out a couple of different ways. You could do x to the third times x and get x to the fourth. Or you could factor out x squared times x squared and get x to the fourth. But what helps us out here is that we know that when we do our outs and our ins, when we FOIL this, right, we do our outs and our ins or our smiles, they have to add to negative x squared, right? And while you can't add x to the third and x to the first and get x squared. So we're not going to use that factor pair for the first term. We're going to break x to the fourth down into x squared and x squared. And as a matter of fact, most of the time, that's how you're going to factor that down. Okay? Especially when that middle term is an x squared term. And we're just going to go ahead and break x to the fourth down into squares. All right? Now, our game is the same. Uh, our lead coefficient is a 1. So, I mean, if it makes you feel better to keep doing the same thing, we can always factor down 1 into 1 and 1. And then we need factor pairs of negative 12, negative 12 and 1, negative 6 and 2, negative 4 and 3. Then we can go 12 and negative 1, 6 and negative 2, and 4 and negative 3. And we would multiply our factor pairs together, right, these guys with those guys and try to come up with adding to negative 1. But again, if you multiply anything by 1 and 1, you don't change them. So you really don't need the 1 and 1s. You're just going to look inside of here and try to find which ones add to negative 1. And obviously, it's these guys, the negative 4 and the 3. And in this particular situation, it doesn't matter which way, which way you go. So x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 3. Now, one thing that we did not talk about when we went through the three previous problems, but we did in the last set of notes, was that you need to look inside your parentheses and see if you can continue to factor. 
Um, remember when we first started all this, if we factored 12 down, just 12, we could go 6 and 2, right? But 6 can factor also. So when you're looking for all of the prime factors, sometimes you need to go ahead and go through a second round of factoring. That's what's going on here. We, can, we need to look and see if we can go through a second round of factoring. Well, both, and so this lead term needs to be something like x, to, x squared or larger. If it's an x to the first, it's not going to factor anymore. So these are both quadratic um, binomials, so they might factor more. Now, there's two terms. Remember from the last homework, there's a trick to this. Two terms might be a difference of two squares. So we see that this guy is a difference because we're subtracting. And you can square root x squared and 4, and so this fits the difference of two squares. So what we do is we create two more binomials. We square root the first term. The square root of x squared is x. We square root the second term. Square root of 4 is 2. And because there's no middle term, right, these smiles are supposed to be adding to 0. The way that happens is if they're opposite signs, 2 and 1. So we go plus or minus. This guy doesn't fit the bill because that's not a difference. So we're not going to be able to factor this binomial down, so we just leave it just like it is. So now we have three binomials that we're factoring down into instead of just two. So you've got to look inside your parentheses and see if you can continue to factor any of the binomials that we have when we factor the first time. All right? So a little quicker. If we want to factor this guy down, it's a trinomial. And so we're going to factor down into two binomials. Uh, two factors only one way, two and one. But again, x to the fourth here, and then an x squared in the middle says that we're going to factor x to the fourth down into x squared and x squared. All right, now we play our puzzle game where we're going to factor down two, factor down negative 10. So two goes to two and one. Negative 10 goes negative 10 and one. Negative five and two, or 10 and negative one, and five and negative two. And we need those factor combinations that will multiply together and then add to give you negative 1. And again, we talked about this a lot um, last time. And we just go through and check. We just start multiplying combinations, 2 times negative 10, 1 times 1, and see if they add to negative 1. And we go through all of these. Um, what you would find is that if you take 2 times 2, you get 4. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, and add that, you get negative 1. So those would be how your, fa your factor combinations. I need to link the 2x squared to the positive 2 in the factors of 10, and so that means the negative 5 has to go here. And we look inside to see if we can continue to factor. Here's two terms, but it's not a difference, so we can't look at the difference of two squares here. Here's two terms and a difference, but you cannot square root this 2 or this 5 and get a whole number. They're not perfect squares. So we're not going to be able to factor this guy down either. So while we're, we still need to check, we just might not always be able to continue to factor. So we're done here. This is it. Okay. Try this. And this is going to be a little tougher because you have factors of 15 that you have to try to co uh, combo up with factors of negative 8. But give it a shot. Stop the video and see if you can come up with it. Uh, start it back up and check your answer. All right. So we still need two binomials. We are going to factor the x to the fourth into x squared and x squared. But now we've got to figure out exactly what factors of 15 and negative 8 we need to use. Could go 15 and 1 or 5 and 3. Could go negative 8 and 1, negative 4 and 2. Or 8 and negative 1, or 4 and negative 2. Combos. We've got to come, through, come up with multiplication combos that add to positive 14. And again, you would just go through and check. Guess and check, guess and check, guess and check. So if you did that, let's see. We're trying to add to positive 14. I think the way we would do that is if we take 5 times 4 and 3 times negative 2. Because 5 times 4 is 20. 
3 times negative 2 is negative 6. We've got 14. So we need to use the factors of 15 of 5 and 3. And then we're going to link 5 times positive 4, 3 times negative 2. And so those are the factors that we need. You still want to look inside and see if you can factor. There are two terms. So we're really looking for a difference of two squares. No difference here, so you can't do that. There is a difference here, but again, you can't square root 5 and 2. They're not perfect squares. So we cannot factor. We cannot continue to factor there. So we're done. That's it. Okay. All right. Take a look at 7. Same process, right? I'm going to factor down to x squared and x squared. Now I need factors of 16 and factors of 1. So 16 could go 16 and 1, could go 8 and 2, could go 4 and 4. 1 could be 1 and 1, or negative 1 and negative 1. But we're going to try to add to a negative 8, so we can't have all positive factors. So we're going to get rid of the two positive ones. We're not going to use those. Now, we need factor combinations that will multiply together and then add to give us negative 8. And what that would, uh, what we'd come up with here after we're just checking through them all is if we take the two 4s and the two negative 1s and multiply them. So that means that our factors of 16 are going to be 4 and 4. We're going to use minus 1, minus 1, and it turns out it doesn't really matter where you put them um, as far as the smiles go because they're all the same, right? Now... Look, here's the difference. Um, there's two terms, and we can square root. Both of these guys are perfect squares. So we can continue to factor the first binomial down into two more binomials. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 1 is 1. And because the middle term is 0, we have to do, two, uh, have to do opposite signs so that our smiles would add to 0. So 2x plus 1, 2x minus 1. And since this binomial is exactly the same, it's going to factor exactly the same. So now there's actually four binomials that we factor down into instead of just two or three. Okay, But we just look. We just look to continue to factor is all. All right? Um, try your hand at this one. Okay, stop the video and try it. And you can always start it back up, and I'll walk you through it. Okay, there is a GCF this time. Did you see that? Of 25x. When you factor out that GCF, you're going to be left with x to the 8th minus 1. Okay, hey, look at there. Two terms and a minus sign. It's a difference. You can square root x to the 8th and get x to the 4th. You can square root 1 and get 1. So this is a difference of two squares. That's just going to factor into x to the 4th plus 1 and x to the 4th minus 1. We want to look inside the parentheses to see if we continue to factor. This is two terms but a plus sign, so it's not going to be a difference of two squares. This is a two, a two terms and a minus sign, so it is going to be a difference of two squares as long as your two terms are perfect squares. And you can square root both of those, so they are. So we're going to leave the first binomial alone and then factor down the second one. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. The square root of 1 is 1, and we have to go plus or minus because the smiles have to add to zero. Now, since we didn't change these guys, they're not going to factor anymore. But here we have two terms and a plus sign, so they're not going to factor. Two terms and a minus sign, and then we look. We can square root x squared, we can square root 1, so we can actually go again. All of this stays the same, but then we uh, factor down into two binomials for the last guy. And the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 1 is 1, we have to go plus or minus, oops, plus or minus, or plus and minus, so that our smiles add to zero. So now we have five factors, including the GCF, that we were able to factor down into. And these are going to all be prime factors. you got to keep going until you get down to prime factors. Factor completely. So I don't know if it's any harder. It's just you got to keep looking and maybe keep factoring.
You may go through a couple, two, three rounds. You may go through six or seven rounds. It all just kind of depends. Okay. One more here for you. Again, stop the video, give it a shot, and see what you come up with. You may have to factor two or three times. That's all right. Okay. Uh, you've got two terms and a minus sign. And if you look, square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of x to the fourth is x to the fourth. So we can actually factor this down as a difference of two squares. So 9x squared, 9x squared, 4, 4, plus and minus, so that our smiles add to zero. A quick look inside the parentheses, two terms and a plus sign, we cannot factor that guy. Two terms and a minus sign, can we square root these guys? The square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of x squared is x. So actually we can go one more round. 9x squared plus 4 stays the same. The square root of uh, 9 is 3, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 4 is 2. And so the next guy is going to be 3x and a 2. To make our smiles add to 0, we go plus or minus. And now we cannot factor any more inside the parentheses. Okay? Just keep factoring. Just keep factoring. Just keep factoring. It's like Dory, right? Um, keep looking inside your parentheses and see if you can factor. And that's really all there is to these harder ones. I don't know if it's any harder. It just takes a little bit longer. Okay? All right, uh, that's it. Homework's out in Canvas, so give it a shot. We'll go through questions you have next time.